Hello. And today I would, uh, I would talk about prediction functionality in Zavix and uh, particularly about the experience uh, from three American companies, uh, Genesis Telecommunications, Ring Central, my previous company, and uh, Distillery is a company of my co-author, Christina. The agenda is very simple. Uh, I first I will briefly remind about prediction history in Zabbix. Uh, then we will focus uh, some use cases uh, from the companies, uh, how, we, uh, how we resolve the issues uh, on uh, <coughs> when, the, uh, when the metric uh, has a rapid change. So when the metric is smooth, it's very easy to predict, and when it is uh, jumps, it is hard to predict. And then we will uh, present a new data model that could be used uh, particularly for cyclic workload, which is a specific metric. Uh, so in 2040, uh, I presented uh, new data models uh, uh, which, uh, which uh, could be used for data prediction. Uh, before this year, uh, prediction functionality was not implemented in Zabbix. Uh, next year, uh, the new release uh, 3.0 was, uh, uh, was released uh, and uh, where prediction functionality was implemented. And the same year, we found uh, in one of the analytical reports uh, that Zabbix uh, became, uh, uh, became in top five of uh, worldwide popular monitoring systems. It is very great success for Zabbix team. Thanks. <laughs> Next year, uh, some workshops uh, took place during Zabbix conferences, and uh, we also have uh, some experience in using prediction functionality in Zabbix. And now let me introduce uh, my co-host, Christina. Uh, she is my PhD student, and she is working at a uh, distillery company. Welcome, Christina. Thank you. I'm going to present several examples of prediction. And uh, so a uh, small intro about my company. It is a software development company based in LA. And mostly we focus on development for startup companies. But also we have several core source projects uh, that used to be startups and now they are tend to be enterprise. So uh, this is a first example uh, from my company distillery and uh, here you can see a uh, rapid jump. Uh, it is prediction like uh, first graph it is uh, information about uh, size of the database files and the next one is prediction of the, uh, how many days we have before space will be finished on the database. Uh, so, when we have a company onboarding, new company, it is a file sharing application and uh, all files from the company Sorry. comes to their storage. Of course, we have uh, a growth, rapid growth of the database, uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, uh, it will be growing the same rate every day. You understand this? And uh, our prediction model was not uh, like not the best one. So we got this uh, drop for prediction period and uh, everybody was in panic. So what is going on? We, uh, we are having uh, to have an outage with the database because uh, the space uh, will be uh, finished, no? Okay, so after this we have a lesson learned. Uh, we, uh, so what Zabbix is recommend uh, is to increase the history look, look back period to have several uh, drops like we did have uh, in the look back, historical look back period. And uh, on the second graph you can see that uh, if we extend this period it uh, becomes almost linear. So we will not forecast that we will have an outage in 30 days, for example. Uh, another example is uh, from the company uh, Genesis. It is prediction of available memory for Java application. 
And uh, the problem is that uh, there are hosts that uh, run in uh, Java application and there is a Java memory leak. Uh, so we monitor uh, the amount of uh, available memory, and when available memory hits the minimal uh, the point of uh, minimal memory, uh, the service is re restarted. And uh, at this point in time, uh, we have a spike uh, because we have like uh, more uh, more available memory, and you can see on the first uh, graph that uh, the prediction is totally inaccurate. Uh, and uh, from the Zabbix uh, recommendation from the documentation, uh, so we know that we might wait why it will be stable. But uh, from our experience, it's better to just to clean up the history uh, at the moment when we restart the service. And uh, this way we will get a uh, accurate prediction. Uh, so uh, the expectation from the Zabbix team is to automate it somehow, for example, to create a trigger that uh, will monitor that uh, process ID is changed. Uh, and uh, so at this moment I can uh, clean up the history and uh, have their accurate uh, forecast. The last example is uh, about cyclic workloads. And uh, so uh, cyclic workloads, uh, they are, comes from the monitor of business metrics. So for example, this is uh, uh, amount of uh, IP calls. And you can see that uh, uh, during the um, working days, we have a, a big amount of IP calls. And during the weekend, uh, uh, so it is much less. So the recommendation about, uh, about uh, how to do this uh, situation is uh, to compare the value with, the, for example, the same point of time in the, uh, from the last day. Or uh, for, with the same uh, day seven days ago. So for example, to compare Monday with Monday. Uh, first uh, idea to compare with the uh, previous day is not working for this example because uh, uh, if we compare Monday with Sunday, we got uh, like uh, something is completely wrong because we have, uh, for example, three times more load. Or, of course, if we compare Saturday with Friday, again, uh, we have a problem. If we use uh, the approach to compare with the same day seven days ago, it is much better. But for example, my previous experience, I worked for the payment system in Russia. And uh, our 31st of December, New Year Eve, it was a nightmare. We finished our work about uh, 11 p.m. because everybody was rushing to pay everything. Because in Russia, we have a big holiday time. It is about uh, 10 days. So uh, we cannot compare it with, so if we try to compare it with the, uh, like, for example, today is 31st of December, Wednesday, and we compare it with the uh, seven days before Wednesday, it's not working. Uh, if we try to compare it with the one year before, for example, New Year Eve with New Year Eve, this will not work again because our sales team, they are working during the year, they uh, bring up new clients, as of course, the lot will be very different. So, um, what we can do about it? The idea, ah, so uh, another example of cyclic workload is from Rink Central, and here it's uh, Fox Cure. And uh, you can see that uh, it's, always, it's also cycling. Uh, so the approach that we would like to have is to be able to set the pattern of the cycle. For example, we can uh, like uh, describe our cycling workload with the same pattern. And uh, great expectation again from the Zabbix team uh, to automate this and uh, to uh, be able to uh, compare our pattern from the cycle we have. And, and on the second graph you can see that there are two normal cycles and the third cycle has an outage. And uh, if we use 
their pattern, it will be detected very uh, fast and clear. Again, several, uh, several examples with cycles with anomaly. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, again, uh, this is uh, another example with uh, all the cycle workload uh, with the outage and anomaly. So, our recommendations uh, when you are dealing with the forecast, uh, if you have some rapid jumps or rapid drops, uh, extend your uh, historical look back period to have at least five up to ten steps. It matches with subex documentations. Uh, if you are starting to use in prediction, our, our recommendation is to set a ratio of half to one uh, because it will help you to get more accurate uh, prediction from the very beginning. And uh, uh, when, we, when you have, for example, uh, same uh, monitoring of the Java application or something like that, uh, if you have a service restart, uh, you can wait, of course, uh, while your um, prediction will be stable, or you can just uh, reset the history. It's, it will be better. Uh, expectation from Zabbix team uh, is to first, uh, first of all, uh, allow to use trends uh, uh, for the focus calculation, because right now it is uh, uh, not available. And again, to uh, work for this, uh, with the cycle uh, workload prediction and to be able to set up the pattern. That's it, thank you. Thank you very much. Time for a slide of questions. Thank you. Uh, we have three questions. So, and the first will be uh, patterns Patterns are predefined or can be found automatically? Uh, if, so right now, uh, we use predefined and we do not uh, have a formula right now. But if, uh, again, Zabbix will uh, uh, make the up that uh, with machine learning, uh, with finding out automatically cycles, it will be much better because, uh, of course, I can, ha I can have some historical data and point to this historical data, get some uh, adjusted uh, uh, patterns to my app. That's great. Thank you. Uh, which version of Zabbix product do you use for prediction purposes? Uh, right now it is 3.2. Thank you. Uh, how do you identify pattern durations? Uh, so, uh, thank you for this question. Uh, right now it is um, mostly manually because when you have uh, this workload, you have a, set, a predefined uh, pattern, you understand that uh, for this pattern, for example, I have duration of one day and this is normal. If I have uh, some workload uh, for the two days, that means that something is uh, changed. And this is uh, very, so, uh, the, uh, so it is, so normally it shouldn't have, uh, it shouldn't be there. And uh, we need to understand why it is there. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Maybe one or two questions from the audience. We still have some time. Okay, I see. So one of the things that you mentioned that the Zabrix guy suggested to do was to um, reset history. Yeah. Well, you're talking about actually delete the previous history for whatever you're monitoring. Uh, so what do you uh, mean by that? It, it, is, it is depends uh, from what you are monitoring. So uh, I was uh, telling about example when we are monitoring the available memory on the host that's running uh, Java application. And if you restart Java application, uh, if you will try to match it with the history that was recorded of the 
uh, available memory, it will not work because it's a different service. Uh, it was uh, like restarted totally, so no, no point of uh, keeping this history. If you have the something similar, maybe when you restart, you should just clean the history and start your prediction from what you have right now. Sure, that, that's probably okay for when you're looking at prediction models, but there's other types of analysis that uh, you'd want to you do. Yeah, yeah, that's prob probably okay for when you're trying to do predictive models, but if yeah. that, there's a lot of other analysis, particularly from a human perspective, when you want to look at the, the previous history that you've just yeah. deleted. Right? So maybe maybe you, you should, keep, you should uh, create two. One to uh, send an alert and, uh, uh, and uh, the mm. other just for history. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. One more question here. Just a second, please. Just, sorry. Uh, sorry. The question about did you try to use autocorrelation instead to, I don't know, linear correlation? Cycling uh, prediction, sorry. Uh, yes, uh, uh, autocorrelation. So we tried it for nonlinear function and linear function, mm -hmm. and it works well, but with cycling workload, there, there are some issues. Okay. Thank you. Uh, will you plan implement uh, multi-parametric prediction? Um, multi-parametric prediction, I think, if I understand your question correctly, uh, we used multi-parametric prediction for non uh, ah, for, ex for example, yeah. uh, amount of uh, bank transactions, card yeah. transactions, depends on active uh, uh, bank cards and uh, dependent on uh, active uh, terminals, uh, ATMs. Yeah, right. For example. Um, so you mean that, uh, uh, for example, if I try to predict my workload for the company, if I get some uh, new users coming uh, into the company, then I should expect uh, a high, high workload, yes? <coughs> Some, sometimes, so what I'm trying to say, sometimes you do not have uh, linear correlation between these because, for example, again, my example with uh, New Year Eve, we have the same amount of users that, uh, I don't know what about you, you're superstitious or not, uh, that are trying to not enter to the new year with the debts. It's something like that. So they pay, for example, for, uh, for electricity, for, uh, for some banking uh, credits, they pay for their bills for the phone, for the internet, for everything. And you are not, so normally you are not expect this uh, to come to you in the very one moment. But uh, for the normal, uh, for example, for my first example, when we have new company on board, this is a fair thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Do we have more questions? Uh, <clears throat> thank you for sharing your experience. Uh, I have a question. Do you have, uh, did, did you have any issues when um, there is da data missing in the loopback interval. Yeah, right now. Uh, and, so how, how, and how do you solve that? Um, so ideally, uh, so uh, we, like, right now we just uh, managed to understand that uh, we will have some inaccurate uh, prediction due to this missing because uh, one of the slides you can see that there was a network outage and there was just nothing on the uh, graph. There was just a gap. So right now we do not uh, uh, automatically overcome this. We just like manage the alerts right there. A any ideas uh, to the Zabbix team how this can be solved? Maybe? Oh. <laughs> Again. maybe Again. Uh, you can uh, uh, use the history of the 
again, uh, one day before, seven days before. Again, if you have uh, some pattern, you can use this pattern to overcome what should be there at this moment. But still, this, uh, this will maybe to help you to overcome uh, the further prediction. I cannot uh, bring their decision right now. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your questions. Thank you. Thank you.